So please welcome back to the stage, Governor Burgum and Chris. Hey, Doug. Chris, thanks for being here. Uh, right. It's uh, great to see you again. Uh, and have been great following uh, your career as Levi said, Packer. Now NDSU, go Bison. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, go Packers, by the way. Uh, best school in North Dakota. Uh, and then go Bison. NDSU is the uh, best university in North Dakota, too. <laughs> No arguments there, but I, I got I love all my children. We love all, we love all 11, and the private ones. We love Jamestown College, too. We've hired students from all of them, but it's great that we got such uh, so many great opportunities. But uh, you're doing some very interesting things uh, with student learning and personalized learning and helping build a cool software app. And as a fellow software entrepreneur, I've really been interested in following what you're doing. But yes. let's go, before we get into the cool stuff you're doing right now. Uh -huh. Let's go back to the beginning on, on your, your journey because uh, you've overcome so many things to get to where you are today and now here you are in North Dakota as a software engineer and a student and, uh, and uh, you're going to maybe get a chance to teach some teachers. Yeah, um, so my, um, my background, I'm from Tanzania, so I was born and raised in a refugee camp um, and we used to actually watch like movies, like American movies uh, and we, like, for a very long time, we didn't even have school um, in one of the refugee camps that I was living. And I'd watch movies of, like, American kids, like, on computers. You know, I used to think, like, they're doing these, like, crazy experiments, like, like, all the things that were going on in the classroom were, like, just, like, crazy. And so I wanted to come here and do that. Uh, I wanted to come to America, and I wanted to, like, innovate. Uh, but when I actually moved here in 2010, what happened was um, I was disappointed uh, because literally the school that I was in, I mean, we had like, I mean, we sat on the floor like in schools that, in the school that I was in. So it wasn't as bad, but like the teacher literally was in front and then, you know, the students basically sat in rows in the back and like in the back of my mind, I was like, well, how does you know, America, one of the most technological advanced, not just technological, but economically advanced uh, countries in the world, like have kind of like, I don't know, how did the classroom look like that? And you have all this technology. Uh, and so I was kind of like bummed and like a little disappointed and even that kind of took a toll on my, uh, my innovations. And it was actually in my high school year where the teachers, who started seeing like my entrepreneurial spirit that started bring, bringing that out. Uh, so that's kind of what my background was and how I, I was so excited to come to school, but you know, kind of bummed out like how it turned out. But so I want to be a driving force to change that. So you, you went from incredible journey, refugee camp, sitting on the floor, no desk, teacher in front of yes. them talking, and make it all the way to the United States, and then you're you're sitting in rows with a teacher talking. Exactly. But only you get to sit now. You got a desk. Instead. Now I got a desk. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but, uh, but then you kept pushing because you believed in this future of technology and uh, and I think you were pushing some of your teachers for it and you you've uh, uh, also had a real belief about uh, understanding that each student learns differently. Yes. Uh, so when when I when I got here, one thing that happened was you know any LL teachers out there. Yeah, so can you guys clap for ELL teachers, please? Um, my, uh, so it was my ELL teachers who kind of started teaching me that. So the way, so Mrs. Klemper was my first ELL teacher, and she started telling me, like, so she would personalize everybody for what country they were from. So, like, since I was from Tanzania, there was, like, Somali students. So with Somali students, she would have a different approaches. But I was from Tanzania, and there, she's never had a Tanzanian student in there. So it was a whole new different culture. So my interests were all different. And she sat down with me. She said, I understand that. Uh, but at the same time, I want to get to actually know who you are as a student, and not just as a student, but as a person. And for me, I'm like, uh, what, like what does that mean? Uh, and so she's like, like, just tell me what your passions are. So I started talking about innovation and like public speaking. So she won Teacher of the Year that, that year. This was back in, so I, I, I got to Colorado first before we moved to Fargo. So my first year of school in, North, uh, in, uh, in, in the US was in Colorado. So when I actually got, um, when the teacher started telling me this, she said, Chris, you said you want to do public speaking. I want Teacher of the Year. I want you to be the student that would actually go give my speech in front of everyone. But you have to write it. And it, she gave me an incentive. She said, if you do a good speech, 
Chris, I'm going to get you out of ELL. And all my friends were out of ELL, so I wanted to get out of ELL. So I sat down and wrote the speech. Uh, had my first uh, kids' meal at McDonald's that day. It was, it was, so, <laughs> it was so cool. Uh, but after that happened, what, um, what happened is she built my confidence. And she got to, she basically uh, found out, like, I have a very drive to talk to people and, you know, get in front of people. When she got, she, uh, she got that, she basically made me a leader in the classroom. And basically from there, um, my parents said, let's move to North Dakota. <laughs> so we moved to North Dakota, and uh, yeah, and I've basically been here it's, uh, ever since. So this has got a real personal connection for you. That yes. this because you experienced what it was like when a teacher really was interested in you as a person, your interests, and what drove your learning and what motivated you. And so you've taken that passion, and then you said, uh, hey, maybe I can turn that into a, an app? Yeah, uh, so uh, coming out of high school, actually, um, I wanted, so you know, you always talk about how you know, there's a lot of videos out there that our students can go uh, learn. So I want to I wanna tell you a little thing here on stage. Um, so there's millions of uh, like videos on YouTube, and when you search for one, you get like hundreds of you, uh, YouTube videos. Like students, we get so distracted like watching those videos sometimes. So I'd be watching like you know how to factor polynomials, and then five minutes later, I'm like watching car videos, and then six hours later, that's what I'm watching. I'm like, oh, I got homework. I was like two in the morning. I'm like, ah, let me just do it real quick. Um, so what happened was, coming out of high school, I just wanted to solve that problem. Like, how can I eliminate distraction? And then that led on to talking to you guys. So I started talking to teachers. And the more that I talked to teachers, the more that they started reminding me of, like, teacher-to-student relationships and building connections with, uh, with their students. And I was actually trying to uh, teach an algorithm about their students because uh, basically my app was going to be like basically teaching a machine about the student so we can find material that would be personalized for them. And the teachers are like, how are you going to teach a machine? Like, us humans want to know our fellow humans too at the same time. And so I basically built an app called Enlight, and uh, it's an app that helps teachers become experts on their students. So Enlight as in short for Enlighten. Enlighten, yes. And, uh, and again, you're, you, again, you've identified this problem of sorting through the, the abundance of yeah. content that's out there, and how do you bring it down to the stuff that really, it really drives and is focused for a student? Yeah. Uh, so it was basically, uh, I, you know, I took it from there, and I was like, and, and Sarah, I started even thinking about it, the teachers. I was like, well, you know, teachers have an abundance of, like, students, like 40 students in one classroom. It's like, you got to get to know each student. And so I started, uh, but by the time that I feel like teachers get to know who their students are and build those deep connections with their students, it's usually uh, in the middle or the end of the semester is when you're starting, like, as a student, you're like, I'm, not, I'm actually starting to get this teacher. Like, I'm actually starting to understand this. So I started calling it the too late effect, which is, uh, you know, the, the connections that you basically build your students are usually kind of come too late when they have to move on to the next teacher. So my goal was basically to build those connections, maybe even on the first day of school, so the teacher can just look at a student profile and say, hey, this is this human being or someone's kid that I will be teaching in my classroom. Uh, and as a teacher, all you have to do is look at the profile and say, okay, this is who I'm teaching. This is what their passions are. This is what their motivations are. Uh, uh, you know, this is what their interests are. And when you get to look at all those spectrums, you can start using them as access points. So if you like basketball, you can make basketball jokes. I know teachers like to throw little jokes out there, you know, maybe on the first day of school and some miss, like, by very, very far. Um, <laughs> But you, when you look at student profile, or you look at uh, what we call a class profile, so the class profile is a dashboard where a teacher can look at the whole classroom as a whole and say, you know, 80% of my students are kinesthetic learners, so let me have more project-based learning in this classroom. Or, you know, like a bunch of my students are visual learners, but what are they interested in? So you can even figure out how you can start differentiating uh, instructions in your classroom. And, uh, you know, as a student, like, building this is kind of crazy, but, you know, the, the mindset that I came out of high school, I was like, you know, high school was great, you know, I had great teachers, but there were some teachers that was, like, kind of, you know, bad, but I was like, well, you know, either go to college, you know, get a job, but, or either, like, fix it. And so my, uh, my ambition was, like, let's fix it, but how can I fix it? And that's where I started, and here I am. So tell us a little bit more uh, for the teachers that are in the audience, if they wanted to get... Uh, started with this, uh, 
you know, and can build, how, how do you get the student profiles built? How do you identify that? Does the student participate? The teachers build it? Uh, so basically, the, the teacher would log in into our app, and they would have their own kind of like uh, uh, dashboard. And then they would invite students, and the profile is literally owned by the student. So the student would create their own profile. So they would send an invite to the student, and the student would take a, a learning preference test. And the students would basically say, you know, these are my interests, these are my passions. And then we ask one really cool question. So we ask students, we say, uh, if you can solve any problems in your community or the world, what would it be? And students get to answer that. Like, I've seen students actually take this, uh, uh, build this profile. And that's the question they always pause at. And I'm like, I, I don't even know. I'm like, well, that's literally their motivation. And it was one student, actually, who uh, was going to become a co-founder. Uh, he was building it. And he's, like, you know, like, very uh, introverted, like, you know. And so, but, like, he said, like, he would love to, uh, to solve uh, uh, behavioral health. And I was like, I never thought of it. I, like, looking at him, I never thought of it. But, like, just by looking at that and him building and owning his profile that he could share with his teacher, that was just, like, very, very, very good. I think you've just shared, uh, you know, a great insight, which is yeah. in the today's world when you can look up any answer anytime, any place on any device, the power is sometimes not the answer but the, a, a, a great question. Yes. And that was a great question. Yeah. Say it one more time for the people with the... The question is on the forum for the students. If, if you could uh, solve, yeah, if you could solve any problem in your community or the world, what would it be? That's a question we ask students. Powerful question, and I'm sure you get a yes. lot of insight. On, and then they, so then the teachers send the invite, students fill out their profiles, their profile. and all of a sudden you've got a class profile that might give you a sense of if I'm going to try to hit the sweet spot in my class? Exactly. So uh, basically, the teacher li literally just sends the invite, and then data just flows in. Uh, and you don't have to do any crazy things. Uh, you know, the app looks very beautiful, too. So I hated, like, how ugly the, <laughs> the apps look like in high school, even in college. Like, if you even look at Blackboard, it probably hasn't changed. But for a very, very long time. Um, but, I, but I know you love power school. So, Kidding. Woo! Okay, sorry. All right. <laughs> it's very ugly. Incredible user interface. <laughs> so yeah, we built like a very beautiful interface. Uh, like I'll be, I'll be at lunch, by the way, I'll be out, uh, I'll be giving demos. So if you want to check it out, come find me. And uh, if they want to go, on, go online, if they don't have... They for definitely come by and yes, say hi to Chris yes, here, but yes. if they miss you here, where do they find you online? Uh, so it's nlightapp.co, uh, so n-l-i-e-n-l-i-g-h-t-a-p-p.co. Um, so yeah, you can find me there, uh, or my first name, so d-i-e-u-m-e-r-c-i, -E chris, at gmail.com, so just email me there, uh, and uh, yeah, just find me, because right now, um, I'm basically dancing, and, uh, and I'm looking for, for the first people to join in on this dance that I'm going through right now. All right. Uh, so nlightapp.co. Light, .co, yes. And so and then, uh, to wrap this up, tell us a little, what are you, what are you uh, studying at NDSU? So I was doing a lot of things. I was doing <laughs> uh, uh, business management. That's my major. And then I was doing economics. And I was doing computer science. And then I was doing uh, entrepreneurship. And then, uh, uh, what else? There's like a fourth one. Um, and, and then finance. I was minoring in finance, too. So, uh, this, so this journey has been kind of very like, good for me. And so I had to drop a few minors. And so now I'm just doing a, a major in uh, management, business management and uh, uh, entrepreneurship. So, and I'm a junior right now uh, in, in college. Well, fantastic. And uh, so great that you're taking your talent, your energy, your passion, and uh, turning into something that's going to help uh, all students and all teachers uh, have a better path towards personalized learning. Yes, yes. Thank you for literally having me here. It's, uh, it's been a very crazy summer for me. Uh, and, you know, being on this stage, um, you know, my, my grandpa used to be um, a, a principal uh, in, in Africa. And so, like, me giving back to the teachers. So my, my mom actually uh, was uh, a para, so she used to help ELL students. That's why I couldn't misbehave, because <laughs> from, from, from African schools, we get, we get whooped in class. So coming to American schools, uh, the teacher would say, go to the principal. And I would be like, oh, I just got to go talk to him? 
Literally, all I have to do is I go convince the principal not to call my mom, and we're good. I'll take <laughs> detention. <laughs> but so yeah, that was that was kind of like the major difference there uh, uh, <laughs> between African schools and uh, what I what I basically start experiencing here. Great. Well, thanks for all you're doing. Let's yeah. give it up for Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you.